on full screen, so I can't uh, see myself, which is okay. Uh, anyway, thank you for uh, hosting me. Uh, in fact, uh, as I was looking back, my title looked more like an abstract. So here is my new title, right? So uh, challenges and new directions for AI and hardware security. Um, I am uh, Kari Ramesh, uh, Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Uh, my collaborator on this work is uh, Dr. Ben Tan. Uh, he's a research assistant professor with uh, the same center. He is uh, joining University of Calgary starting this fall. So I'll skip a, two or three slides that uh, introduce NYU Center for Cybersecurity for short or for uh, to just say one time. I know Zoom uh, is a little difficult for all of us, so I'll skip some of this background and go directly into my uh, presentation. And if you have any questions, uh, I don't know who to. Anyway, so probably I'll take the questions at the end. So what I'll do in this talk, uh, my aim here is to present a broad vision of the intersection between AI and hardware security. First, I'll highlight some recent advances in the use of AI and machine learning in the broader sense in hardware security problems. And uh, along the way, uh, I will present my thoughts on challenges and new directions that are ripe for exploration. So uh, first, let me pose this question. What does hardware security look like in the age of uh, AI and machine learning? Uh, to examine this, let us consider hardware security as two potentially overlapping threats. Hardware for security, where we use the hardware components to add security capabilities and security of hardware, where we are more concerned about security issues in the hardware designs themselves. Uh, AI is an umbrella term for a variety of techniques. Uh, several of you have talked about some of the techniques and by the end of this, uh, this workshop, many other techniques would have been discussed. Um, th th essentially, th these are techniques that give computers the ability to learn, to reason and problem solve. Uh, of particular note is this uh, recent rise of deep learning uh, techniques. Uh, where state-of-the-art results have done quite well across many domains, healthcare, autonomous vehicles, and uh, as all of you are around, uh, in this particular meeting, integrated circuit design. Uh, researchers have investigated how such techniques can be used to enhance or undermine existing hardware security approaches. The key point is that AI can be both beneficial and harmful. Harm can be caused either unintentionally, which is most of the time, or deliberately. Uh, let's take a look at the hardware for security, where hardware components are used to provide a foundation for system security beneath potentially untrustworthy software. Examples of such components include hardware-based monitors, like hardware performance counters for collecting microarchitectural events, and hardware-based primitives, like physically unclonable functions. So in one embodiment, defenders can use AI and ML to monitor and discover stealthy attacks by using these hardware-enabled observations. They can then build models that are able to identify anomalies. Conversely, attackers can use these same techniques to build models that allow them to infer sensitive information. Uh, one of several mature areas in hardware security is that of hardware trojans. These are maliciously inserted functionality that is triggered during runtime. 
Attackers can insert hardware trojans at various stages of the design flow. And typically, they represent very small changes to area, timing delay, and other design characteristics. Despite their stealth, several AI or ML-based approaches have shown good success at detecting hardware trojans, in, especially in gate-level netless. Typically, uh, these in, uh, approaches involve uh, training and evaluation of ML models using benchmarks sourced from Trust Hub. Uh, this was what Professor Helen Lee was mentioning, uh, uh, the website there. And uh, applying ML techniques successfully is not a trivial pursuit, um, as defenders must first identify an appropriate input representation for a design. Unlike images in other cases, which are easily represented as multidimensional matrices, appropriate circuit representations are a little more challenging to produce. So, for example, researchers have proposed features such as net, uh, based on net characteristics. These include elements like the number of gates in a net fan in, or the gates distance from the output, or from a flip flop or from the nearest multiplexer and so on and so forth. So what I'll do here is go a little deeper into a recent work that we have done in Trojans in large scale systems. Uh, on the top left is the architecture of a test bed that we developed here at NYU to study a diverse range of Trojans. Uh, on the bottom left is the messy implementation and this uh, uh, is, we made this remotely accessible for a variety of reasons, including the, this helped us during COVID uh, quite well. Uh, the top, the, on the right hand side is a table, and it has the various single board computers that are in the test bed. For example, we have one Odroid XU3 five Odroid XU4s, if you look at the yellow row at the bottom, and so on and so forth. Um, it, this, this table also has some complexity metrics, for example, number of CPUs, number of GPUs, number of cores per CPU, number of cores per GPU, threads per core, and so on and so forth. All of a sudden, I hope this gives you the scale and complexity of the system. Uh, it's scalable. You can add additional platform, uh, additional boards. It's complex, it's heterogeneous. And one key thing is it's software reconfigurable into different interconnect topologies without making any hardware modifications. So uh, these are, uh, I don't know if you can see this table. I usually cannot because my glasses are a little not as powerful, but anyway, side channels. Here are some side channels supported by the single board computers in the test bed. Hardware performance counters count various events. These could be, for example, number of instructions, branches taken, and so on, when code is executing. For example, ARM Cortex on Raspberry Pi allows for uh, simultaneously reading or monitoring six hardware performance counters, although they support many more. HPCs are built into all CPUs, all GPUs in the single board computers. The HPC supported differ from one CPU to another and from one GPU to another. And you can see those things in this particular chart where you see a tick mark where it's supported and an X where it's not supported. So what we then do is collect a time series of these HPC measurements as a temporal profile of the code executing in the processor or on the platform. Uh, for each of these platforms, you could use a different set of HPCs based on the HPCs that are supported. For example, for one of these, we used uh, typical, for many of these, we used uh, uh, instructions, branches, uh, stores, loads, instruction cache misses, and uh, L2 data cache misses, and so on. Um, each of these platforms, again, support HPC sampling at uh, different sampling rates to collect HPCs. Um, we use uh, PAPI, which is a performance application programming interface library that can convert 
remotely to individual processes and uh, reads uh, the performance counters for that particular process when it's executed. So besides these uh, digital performance counters or digital side channels, as I call them, uh, these boards and in general systems support a range of other side channels, such as thermal, power, uh, and uh, fan, and so on and so forth. Here are some Trojans. Uh, at the hardware level, the tro uh, hardware level Trojan, the adversary could potentially insert or modify a hardware component uh, to modify the IO operation between boards. I call them the machine in the middle, the MITM, and they connect to IO lines between the boards. The attacker may either disable or tamper a component on the SBC or single board computer. For example, it may disable the power supply to a component. Now let's look at software anomalies. The attacker may override or cause anomalous system behavior using kernel level rootkits by modifying device drivers, by, modif by running additional kernel level modules and potentially user level applications. Let's look at firmware level anomalies. Similarly, an attacker may modify the firmware of say a router in the, uh, in the test bed and or one or more as single board computers. They may also modify the open source firmware for some of these uh, uh, monitors. Uh, for example, the smart power to monitor on the Odroid SBC. Besides these three types of Trojans, you can also have multi-layered attacks where an attacker may trigger malicious firmware or compromised software using hardware, firmware, or software level uh, Trojans. For example, privilege ex one can uh, launch a privilege escalation attack by using malicious firmware, by deploying malicious firmware rootkits uh, leading to software-based attacks and so on. So now that we look at these Trojans, let's uh, see what uh, ML has got to do with this. Um, as a defender, as I mentioned, we start with a time series of these diverse side channel measurements. Uh, the time series of these HPC measurements is a temporal profile of the execution of the code. Uh, and we read these HPCs at different sampling rates for the different platforms and we align them and uh, so on. Then this is what we do. We validate that the collected traces and, uh, and the relationships between these traces by one, checking for design-based equivalences and inequivalences. And we also check for approximate feature-based rules and interrelationships between site channels. So if you look at this carefully, the top part essentially, so the threat model is a designer designs this board, so they have a schematic and they outsource the fabrication and building of this board. So the designer, since they have the design, they can, they know the expected uh, uh, software that they expect to have on the platform, the expected behavior of the individual devices, and so on and so forth. That's the top part. These are the checking for design-based equivalences and so on. And the bottom, you see training using signal traces. What we do here is since once again, the designer has access to the schematics, they can build simple simulators for the various devices instead of having these individual devices because they don't assume a golden model. So this way, this is a golden free approach. Besides, we support in, uh, applying random inputs or controlled inputs to eliminate Trojans and study the various properties. So we do the anomaly detection relative to the learned ML model here. Once again, we don't need a golden model or a golden board. So this is a, a, a more detailed discussion of the golden free anomaly detector. Uh, the 
here we use, as I mentioned, the behavioral model, because when you do an ML-based detector, you need a lot of data. And once you build this ML, uh, uh, a simulation model, then you can generate a lot of data, provides lots of data, training data to train classifiers for anomaly detection. We used uh, a one class SVM, we used a one class local outlier factor, and each has different trade-offs. Um, the LOF tended to work better for single board test cases, SVM for multi-board, but even when we interchanged them, the loss in uh, accuracy was not as much. Um, the intuition is that the local outlier factor is based on estimating the local deviation of a data point with respect to its neighbors. So it's quite fast in that sense. Whereas the SVM uh, is based on estimating the boundary for the set of all possible normal data points. So that's a little more expensive in terms of computations. So all of these class, one class classifiers estimate an outlier score for a, any given data point during test, not the training. And then we use an adaptive thresholding that estimates a reasonable threshold uh, uh, by computing an outlier score on a separate validation data set. So this is one application of using ML for Trojan detection. So now let me go back and identify a few challenges. The traditional challenges are uh, in terms of the power and area overhead of hardware for security, then the reliability implications of that hardware, detecting and preventing design bugs is another issue, and security requirements engineering is a, a problem there as well. But if, if the opportunities that ML provides are the, the behavioral classification models for detecting anomalies. Uh, you can do real-time attack detection and mitigation, and you can also support adaptive responses. So that's the benefits of using AI and ML in this context. But then AI presents related challenges. As I out, uh, alluded to, how do we represent hardware artifacts meaningfully for ML to uh, do a good job? And the second, once again, uh, I alluded to is how do we get enough data for quality AI? Uh, and finally, there are the threats associated with the use of ML. For example, although I didn't talk about it, model building attacks on physically unclonable functions, automate the ML automated bug detection and exploit generation uh, is another thing that the attackers can use using the AI. And just like the defenders, the attackers can also use adaptive side channel analysis. So uh, an emerging development in the literature and uh, is the focus of this particular workshop as well, is AI and ML techniques in the hardware design flow. For example, researchers have applied a variety of techniques at various design abstractions and design stages. For example, system level prediction of hardware overhead, for example, for logic optimization, test point insertion, and uh, all the papers are a majority of papers in this workshop. So these efforts essentially represent new approaches for handling scalability challenges and improving design turnaround time. So this illustrates a typical iterative design stage with uh, deep learning in the loop where DL models are used to support dec decision-making and design space exploration. Consider logic synthesis as an example. The success of MS uh, machine learning algorithms has prompted researchers to re-examine logic synthesis whose heyday was in the late 90s and early 2000s. The overarching question is, in this context, can past experience lead to informed decision-making for future problem instances? So far, design engineers use their experience from past synthesis runs to intuit a good synthesis recipe for a new IP to scale up designs 
and to enable faster design sign off, uh, researchers formulate learning tasks in logic synthesis domain and propose ML algorithms to solve them. One such problem is to predict synthesis recipe quality, i.e. identify if a recipe will generate a good quality design for an IP by training a model on data from a few synthesis runs. So while these techniques claim state-of-the-art performance, the implications for hardware security in light of untrusted supply chains and malicious insider threats remains ripe for expo exploration or exploitation, where defenders can use ML to detect security issues. Recent work has shown that adversaries can abuse ML in the design flow. So models, uh, machine learning models can be abused or can be fooled in many ways. Here are two ways. On the top row, you have, you have seen these classic examples. You have a clean image of a horse and an adversarial image with prediction labels uh, that are different from a horse. Uh, the adversarial perturbations are so minute as to appear imperceptible. And if you look at the bottom, uh, one can poison the training data, not just the input, but the training data. A stop sign with a sticky note can then trick the model to show that it is not a stop sign. So is AI in the IC design flow immune to such attacks? Defenders can use AI and ML to detect security issues, as we talked about that. Adversaries can abuse AI in the design flow. So this points to larger concern of not just vulnerability, but uh, points to the fragility of ML-based approaches. So uh, to, uh, one has to consider the robustness of the developed ML frameworks uh, or the tools that you develop, at least in terms of AI and ML and its growing role in hardware design. If the security of hardware relies on parts of the supply chain being properly safeguarded, AI and ML in the design flow may add new attack targets. Every tool is vulnerable and at, uh, at new attack vectors and likewise, uh, and so re re requires uh, careful analysis and defense. So let me go to a, a quick example in terms of lithographic hotspot detection, one more classic uh, layout level uh, technique where ML has been applied. Here an adversary can subvert a DL-based lithographic hotspot detector by means of semantically meaningful adversarial input perturbations. This is akin to the perturbation in the horse, but here it has to be semantically meaningful. Here the attackers insert SRAS, which are the sub-resolution assist features that let lithography proceed uh, properly to trick the hotspot detector into making bad predictions. These layouts still follow the design rules for the SRAS. Uh, in the white box attacks, the attacker has access to the model parameters. In the black box attacks, the attacker has only access to the inputs and the outputs of the model. And we have tried a couple of these uh, networks and in both cases, these attacks work. Once again, continuing with the same uh, lithographic hotspot detection, researchers showed the potential for training data poisoning attacks, similar to the backdooring uh, of uh, the traffic light uh, uh, example. During design, a malicious insider 
can coerce the hotspot detector into turning a blind eye to a hotspot containing layout clip, despite its high accuracy under benign settings. Nefariously, poisoning involves adding layout clips that are honestly labeled and are thus near impossible to identify ahead of time as a result. To address these potential attacks, recent work attempts application-informed defenses where data is meaningfully transformed so as to reduce this backdooring effect. So now in terms of CAD and so on, the traditional security of hardware, the traditional challenges are preventing reverse engineering, thwarting overbuilding, piracy, and counterfeiting, uh, detecting and preventing Trojans in ICEs, preventing site channel leakage, and so on and so forth. And as I pointed out, ML presents opportunities to improve design flows, to discover security techniques, to automate Trojan detection, to automate bug detection, to support analysis and patching and so on. But as I pointed out, ML threats are need to be carefully considered. ML vulnerabilities under adversarial settings, especially since ML-based tools are very fragile. ML-based signal analysis that the defenders use are also accessible to the attackers. Similar to decision-making using ML for the attack defenders, the attackers can also benefit. So quickly, uh, what I had done is I presented examples of the benevolence and the mal malevolence of AI and ML. On one hand, defenders can use ML to monitor and discover stealthy attacks. Conversely, attackers can use the same techniques to build models that allow them to infer sensitive information. For defenders, Hardware security relies on gathering knowledge in adversarial contexts and finding ways to withhold knowledge to meet the security goals. With this in mind, I'll point to three research directions. There could be a few more. So runtime decision-making and response. As we saw ML used for behavior monitoring, the next step could involve generating active responses. At runtime, hardware security systems could perform mitigations. For example, isolate attacked components or spin up redundant components. Can AI ML systems make decisions as to which course of action to take to preserve system integrity or overcome an attack? Building along this avenue could be the exploration of uh, generative ML such as generative adversarial networks, where models could generate new responses when faced with threats. In terms of design analysis, we'll need to create new representations for hardware design artifacts. For example, several of the works are beginning to use graph convolutional networks to deal with netlists as, sub as graphs. Others are transforming hardware design artifacts into images. So which representations are ideal? Which are better and which are better for what context? These are interesting questions to investigate. Another challenge in hardware security is formulating security properties to begin with and using these properties during the design uh, or guiding the design, guiding the analysis throughout the process. So uh, finally, understanding the implication of ML vulnerabilities. Uh, vulnerability to adversarial input perturbations, we saw those. Training data poisoning, we saw those. Can raise, these can raise new issues for safeguarding and uh, integrative of hardware design flows. Now you are adding additional tools. Now you got to be careful of not only the existing tools, but these uh, new set of tools that are ML based. So more work needs to be done to fully evaluate model robustness and how this might pose risks to hardware. So the key takeaways, as I conclude, are as follows. 
Hardware security in general continues to pose numerous challenges. AI seems to provide new opportunities for both the defenders and the attackers. So the more conventional short-term uh, takeaway is that you can use AI ML to find new patterns in existing data, both for detection, both for modeling, and for both for an attacker and a defender. Uh, further down the road, one can envision AI and ML tools as an attack vector in the design flow. And further down, AI-based decision-making and generation and adaptive responses are an important design, uh, an important research area. So with that, please check out our papers, reach out to us, and if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, let me know. Thank you for your patience. I hope I got you back on time, Helen. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ramesh, for the excellent talk and also uh, for the timekeeping. <laughs> I actually open Q&A um, for the audience and feel free to start. Click to talk or... Yeah, I guess, and you know, this and, uh, new interface is, is a little bit, we need a little bit of time to learn about this. And uh, Ramesh, I really like your summary here. Uh, it will be in Bible book in the future. So for people, whoever working on uh, cybersecurity, machine learning, and also system designs all together. <laughs> Thank you. Is there any questions from audience? I finally figured out how to use Q&A. <laughs> um, Ramesh, we're talking about the machine learning for CAD and the security issue or the reliability issue certainly is an, very important for uh, CAD domains. And um, I kind of a wondering, um, is there any concrete security problems in machine learning CAD has been fined where um, are you projecting like which area it could happen earlier or first? Security issues or security benefits? So mm. in terms of security, uh, using ML for security is already happening in terms of uh, uh, right. using machine learning lots of machine learning tools that use side channel lot variety of side channels using those side channels and making improved decisions and a faster clip uh, in terms of which uh, area could be breached early which which machine learning tools could be breached early is uh, is also an interesting uh, topic the tools that go out early on whichever these tools these are i think some of these uh, side channel analysis tools could be mm -hmm. the ones that could potentially be undermined sooner. So, so my one liner for my uh, some of these things is if you can mine a lot of data, you can equally right. easily undermine that particular uh, area right. of research. Yeah, yeah, that makes so, perfect sense. Yeah. So in that sense, layout level tools seem to be quite promising. So in that sense, layout level. Uh, tools could mm -hmm. be the first things to be breached. Again, these are my, my I see, I see. So it's not like only layout to choose. It's essentially, um, you know, every layer going to be integrated together. So it's a starting from outside and will be intrude uh, into uh, in, inside of the systems. Okay. Yes, it, it's all end to end. If you look at one of my slides where there's lots of these uh, uh, bull size, every tool is vulnerable. So no tool is any more uh, protected or any less uh, protected. I see, I see. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Ramesh. Um, I'm still wondering, I mean, in case of any questions, then feel free to uh, reach out to Professor R Ramesh Kerry. Um, Ravi, actually, uh, I will pass the control to you. Um, if should I close the Q&A or? Um... Thank you.
Um, Ravi, are you still here? 